Hey everybody, I'm Ken Barner, uh, owner, general manager at Harley Davidson Aquantico here in Dumfries, Virginia. I got Big Cell with me today. We're going to do a little tour of the dealership and uh, we're going to show you something really cool. Yeah. And uh, we're going to talk about some really cool stuff we got going on with with the dealership and, and sell. And everybody stay tuned, it's going to be pretty awesome. I have a dream that one day this nation will be Ken Barner. I'm going to introduce himself, talk about his background as I bring in a little bit, and then we're going to get into what he has introduced, man, to the Harley Davidson world, why it means so much to me, why it means so much to, why it should mean so much to everybody. One thing you have to know, man, is that these owners don't have to do any of the things that they're doing. When you see these bikes fixed up, when you see them put the extra stuff on there, that's because they choose, so that's their own personality, and that's what makes each dealership so unique and so different. And that's the whole thing about Harley Davidson. That's why even the Harley Davidson brand is so different and so unique that it's, it's a brand like no other. And I can't, and I, you know, you guys always hear me say HD and nothing. I know that's a little slogan that I turn around. But for me, Harley Davidson encompasses the freedom. It encompasses the fact that you could be whoever you want to be on your Harley. I mean, you can have the same Harley Davidson, but I don't know mine when I get to the parking lot and you don't know yours when you get to the parking lot. Very often do you say, Danny, is that my bike? You know what I'm saying? But even though it's the same bike from the factory, everybody everybody puts their own personal touches on it. So I'm gonna spend a day with Ken today, man. We're gonna to talk to him, we're gonna to walk to the dealership, we're gonna to talk to some of the employees. But right now I have the pleasure of having his time. He's a very busy man. He has granted us the time to be here to just talk about who he is as an owner, what got him into Harley Davidson, and then we'll talk about the special project that he got into that he ventured into. Ken, what's going on? How you doing, sir? Good boy. All right, all right. What got you in first of all, who are you? Where are you from? Uh, you know, I'm just an average guy, you know, <laughs> what do you say? Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I was, I was born in the mountains in PA and, okay. uh, you know, went in the military and never went home. Went to the military? Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, okay. Did a year in the Gulf and just never went home. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, there was nothing there and, uh, you know, there just wasn't. There wasn't any reason to go home, okay. so I, you know, I ventured down to Florida. I had some friends that lived in Florida, and and I've always been a motorcycle guy. Okay. I mean, ever since I was, you know, that big. Yeah. Um, you know, I I stumbled rode Harley's, uh, stumbled into a Harley dealership, and a, and a guy asked me what I was doing, and told him I just moved to Florida. And asked me if I wanted a job, and that was sort of kind of. So the you end actually of it. started off working at Harley Davidson. Yeah, 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 man. I, you know, listen. I, I, I'm, again, I came from, I mean, a little small town, and I graduated high school. Forty three people. There was no work there. Forty three people. Forty three wow. people. Nineteen ninety. Forty three people. Whoa. Um, I mean, the school was so small. We played offense and defense when we, when we played <laughs> football. You didn't, you didn't get a break. You didn't get you know, a break. <laughs> uh, it's. It, uh, you know, but it was cool. It, uh, you know, we hunted, we fished, we did all those things that the old boys in the mountains do, and yeah. we drank beer and we fought. And yeah. You didn't have a chance. You know, you didn't have a choice whether to fight or not. You yeah, either, it was, yeah, you either right. fought or you got your ass whooped. You know? So, <laughs> um, <clears throat> you know, and and again, just an average guy that that uh, played my cards right and got into the business and and did well selling motorcycles and. 
worked my way up from there and, and, and I became a, a sales manager per se. Okay. Um, and, and at that point, you know, I knew it was my career and I knew I was I was going to do this for the rest of my life. I love motorcycles. Yeah. I still love motorcycles. There's not a day that I get up that I go, oh, damn, I got to go to work. Yeah. I and mean, I think I got the best job in the world, you know. Okay. Um, so, you know, with that being said, I, I enjoyed fixing up motorcycles. I had a lot of fast motorcycles okay. and I uh, really, really, really enjoy it. And, you know, became a, a general manager of a store, ran the number one store in the country for several years. And then got tired of it, got burnt out. And I just went in one day and, and I told him I was leaving. I gave him 30 days notice. I left, I went, started my own shop, exported Harleys for a couple of years. And uh, my business partner now, uh, got wind of of who I was through Harley Corporate, and uh, we so what so Harley wait so Harley Corporate got wind of you through the exporting of no 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 okay. Harley Corporate I, I mean I just you know because of who what I did for Plus, so many years yeah, I just had a lot of good okay. a lot of good uh, just did everything by the book and and, yeah. and you know didn't get in any trouble so uh, as part of the the deal when you're in a dealership Harley Corporate can't tell another dealership hey this guy's available okay. But at the time, I was—I just had my own little shop and was exporting Harleys out of the country. And uh, the, my business partner now contacted corporate when we when we worked a deal on this place and said, "Look, you know, I'm buy, we're going to buy a Harley store, but I don't have anybody to do it." And, and people at Harley said, "Call this guy," mm. you know. And uh, I was in Florida. Yeah. It was just uh, luck of the draw and doing things by the book and doing the right things. Yeah. And uh, he called me up and asked me if I'd be interested. And, Four and a half years later, here we are in snowy, cold Virginia. <laughs> well, one, one of the things too that since meeting you, man, that I have to that I have to say on camera is that you know sometimes we're very skeptical about you know owners. We have this persona that most of the owners are unreachable people. They're untouchable people. Like you know they, they have yeah they have that persona that you know hey yeah they're silver spoon people. Yeah. They're not average everyday people. Okay, you know I, I think that's the difference where, where you know where I come from where. Where a lot of the people that, that were born with that silver spoon, they didn't have to work to get to where they are. Okay. And, and, and you know, there's a lot of good dealers out there, a lot of good Harley owners out there, and, and a lot of good dealership owners out there. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a pretty pretty tight group, but yeah, there's some that are approachable. But for the most part, man, they're just they're just like you and I. Yeah. You know, we put well, we I put mean, our pants on one leg at a time. You, you definitely know? you definitely have uh, I mean made it seem you know you when I tell people you know you my friend or I mess with you or I know you I can call you that's just amazing for me but for the most part man you definitely have brought the the you brought the down to, you know you brought the top down to the middle where everybody can you know at least have an understanding or a feel of what it is today man I want to take this time man for people to get to know and understand you know when you reached out about the uh, the project that we that you completed it's an awesome and beautiful project I'm gonna show you guys later on what was your inspiration for that? Well, what, what even made you conceive that? Because we all know a lot of people <clears throat> exploit the holiday. They exploit for whatever reason, for customer base, for sales. But this is different, and I'm telling you guys it's different, and I know it's different. So what, what was it for you? You know, the biggest thing for me, so, was when we bought this dealership for 2013. Okay. It had a very, very, very poor reputation. The people just didn't come here. Okay. Um, it, it. When I say the people didn't come here, the the, the 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 whole demographics of people didn't like to shop here because of the way it was handled. Okay. But specifically, the African American clientele, okay. they just didn't. They, they, it just went our area. It, it just, just, just it wasn't, wasn't yeah. it. You okay. know. Um, and, and I came in and I got to know some of the local guys, and some of the local guys started shopping. And yeah. Hanging out, and talking, and you know, I, I, again, we're all the same. We put our pants on one leg at a time, you yeah. know. Um, and 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 in this area, you know, per se, is is you got to treat everybody the same. You yeah. know, there's, I'm no different than you. You're no different than me. You yeah. know, we're we're just we're just two guys that enjoy motorcycles. You yeah. know, and 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 you know. Why not embrace that? If somebody wants to come into your dealership yeah. and buy a motorcycle and hang out and have fun, why not embrace it? Why be picky on who you want to buy a motorcycle from and who you don't want to buy a motorcycle from? You? Is there is there has there been a demographic change since you've been on? What's the difference yeah. between when you first started selling to now being an owner? What has been the what's been the biggest change? 
here specifically? Wait, or just, I just mean, in just general? in general, as you watch, we, we get to hear, but just in general, you say you started off in Florida. As well, a I think I think the biggest difference in the Harley world is a lot more people are coming from the sport bike world mm-hmm. into the Harley. Transition. Okay. Yeah, there's a big transition. There's, you know, you start talking about some of the stuff we build, you know, mm-hmm. the 26s and the 30s and the 32s and the big motors and the yeah. big stereos and all that stuff. So now, you know, back then, 15, 18 years ago, a Harley was an old man's bike. Yeah. You yeah. know, and, and when you think about it, oh, yeah, my grandfather and my yeah. old man. But now everybody wants to ride a bagger. Yeah. You know, everybody is cool. You put there, you know, there's so many parts that have become available for them. There's just the transition is is huge, yeah. um, you know. And to to see what people are creating out there is just it's really awesome. I I, I just enjoy the shit out of it. I love them. And so you so you, if you guys don't know, I call it history in motion. That was just, that's what I named it. Did you name the bike yet? We haven't. We haven't. Yeah, yeah, we haven't. Uh, really. I call it history in motion. Again, you guys will see it later on. So for you to sit at home or sit wherever you were and come up with the concept that hey, this is what I want to do. And contribute to the to the, to to honor the Black History Month or, or the Afro American or Iron League program or whatever it is. What was what was it? What made you do that? Well, it, you know, it goes back to the history bike that we built, the history of Harley Davidson. I was sitting at home, where just you know, uh, Harley and the Davidsons was on TV, yeah. and I said, you know, I don't I don't sit down and watch much TV okay. from you know start to finish, so. You know, of course, the history of Harley Davidson. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to watch it. Yeah. Too, you know? <laughs> so as I sat there and I thought, you know, I'm watching the TV and, and, and I turned my phone off, which doesn't happen very often, and, and I actually focused on the TV. And I had the idea, damn, you know, let's let's build a history bike. Let's yeah. let's. So I called my painter. I said, look, Brian, Brian at BKP down in South Carolina, which they do a great job. I said, look, here's an idea. What do you think? And he's like, damn, that's a good idea. Yeah. So we bounced ideas off of each other, and we built the history bike, okay. which is uh, in uh, this month's issue of Hot Bike. Okay. Um, it was on by the cover of Bagger Magazine, the 2017 Buyer's Guide, so it was a pretty big hit for us. So, you know, that being said, I, we did that bike, and... Uh, you know, again, that bike, did the bike sell or did it? No, we still have it. It was my personal okay, bike. I okay. never really wanted to sell it. We're still, okay. still up in the air. You know, okay. I don't get attached to too many of them. But <laughs> I sort of got a love affair with that bike, you know. But, um, you know, so then, you know, that's over, done with. I'm that guy that, okay, I got that gratification. I yeah. built that bike. That was cool. Um, and, and <coughs> excuse me, we do a lot of different things. I'm always looking for something cool to build, you okay. know. And I never really, it just, I don't even know what brought it on one day, and I thought, man, let's do it. Let's. What about it? And and I ask a bunch of people about their thoughts. Yeah. I ask as some of your friends, Dave, yeah. and Charles, and I said, look, you know, let, let me get some input. Me being a white dude, you being a black guy, let me get your input. What do yeah. you think about this? Yeah. And when I ask them, they both, you know, the few people that I asked before, I and I, I called yourself and yes. said, hey, so what do you think about this? And I got the same reaction out of those guys as I got out of you. Okay. Man, that's, that's a pretty cool idea. Yeah. You know, so I can visualize it. I can't paint it. So okay. I rely on the painter. I call him up, and he's like, yeah, okay. That's, yeah. yeah, that's a different request. Nobody's ever done that before. Yeah, let's do it. So we did it. And then I thought, okay, in conjunction with what Harley's trying to accomplish with, um. with the... Uh, you know the younger generation, the outreach of, of, of different cultures, it's perfect. You know yeah. the Iron Elite. It's nobody's really ever given the Iron Elite a hundred and ten percent. And yeah. and we had that conversation. Yeah. You know, um, so I thought, man, what a what a great way to do this. So we talked with Harley and told them what we were doing, and they agreed to give us the. Uh, the bike. Hey, we got a, We got an announcement too. We we're talking about that. Yeah, yeah. I didn't want to get too but then, far. But let's think it. Let's think it. So <coughs> the concept, basically, you had already did the first one, the, the history, the history bike. bike. Yeah. So right. then you decided to do the Black History bike. Right. Okay. One of the things I want you guys to know is this, and this was so important to me, and this was kind of this was kind of really made me jump full on board. Was he said, "Sell, just give me all the research you can because I don't want to just paint it, but I want to <coughs> know it." I want to yeah. know the history, yeah. you know. I, and he and he confessed, like, "Hey, man, we, you know, growing up where I grew up, it was not being taught. It was not, <laughs> it, was, it was not something that we knew." You've been up there. No, no, it was some of the names that I, I mean, gave. He was like, well, "Who was this? Who was that?" 
And then you actually said, well, hey, let me do the research on these individuals. And you took your time, you did the research, and you selected who you selected for the bike. Because we had a list of 20 or 30. Yeah. Yeah, you selected who you selected for the bike. And, and that's what I applaud you for, man. And that's what, that's what kind of, you know, made me grow fonder of you. I was already there, but like I said, that just kind of put me on a different level because you actually cared. Yeah, so it wasn't it wasn't just something. That, let me do this to get the recognition. Let me do this to to take advantage of the holiday. So no, it was it, 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 and you know to be honest, when I had the idea, I didn't even I didn't even think about February. Yeah, you know when I first started this idea, I was thinking, okay, who was instrumental in the motorcycle, the history, the the, yeah. the, the history the origin, of motorcycling? Yeah. It, it was more. It was more about, we, we already built the history of Harley-Davidson with the four founding fathers. Yeah. Okay, who on the flip side was was instrumental in the, the motorcycle culture of, yeah. of Harley-Davidson on, on that side of the fence versus the, the, the corporate side of the yeah. fence? We know who was on the corporate side. Now, who's on this side of the fence? And, 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 I, and I wanted to make sure we incorporated all those people, like okay. Betsy. And, 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 and you know the yeah. people that were really instrumental in in in, in that culture. Yes, yeah. was more so my my main goal. Uh, more so, so I, than just what did you people. learn? What did you learn? Doing your research. What did you learn? I I mean, it's, it's, so it's pretty cool. I never knew. I never knew about the Captain America books. Yeah, you did. Uh, no, I never. I never even heard of Sugar Bear. Yeah. I, I don't know why. You know what I mean? It was like, okay, who the hell is Sugar Bear? You know? Yeah. Uh, so and and. Uh, you know, it's it's just really cool about yeah. Betsy. You know, being uh, the first AMA black lady that that rode, and I mean, she put on and dressed as a as yeah. a guy, yeah, which was the crazy part. <laughs> you know, she did a lot of that dressed as a guy. Yeah, I, I never knew that. Yeah. You know, just because of women didn't belong on motorcycles, and a the black the woman the on a motorcycle through, yeah. was even you more know, crazy. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> she did a lot of it dressed up as a guy, and I never knew that. You yeah. know, so it was it was pretty cool to to look at the history of it again. I. I didn't know. Yeah. You know. I was ignorant to it. You yeah. know, where I grew up, there was, there, there we just, it was ninety nine point nine percent white. Yeah. So, so we didn't have that history to be able to, to know it. They didn't, they didn't yeah. teach it to you. So, you know, me being ignorant to it, I had to go and research it all. Once we talked, yeah. I said okay. And then I sort of kind of looked and like Sugar Bear, he was cool, yeah. you know. And, 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 ben and, Hardy. Yeah, yeah, ben, yeah, ben yeah. Hardy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was just, it was really cool information to learn. That I didn't know yeah. because it related to motorcycles, which was cool. And it was a significant part of it. That's what that, it was a that huge was, part yeah. of the motorcycle culture. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, you look at just some of the shit that Sugar Bear yeah. built back in the '60s and '70s. I yeah, mean, he was the man. Yeah. You know, but uh, again, times have changed, and, and if that was today, they'd be huge stars, and everybody would know who they were. Man. And, and uh, you know, so it, I, it was it was fitting, you know, and and I just thought that. It was crazy that it worked out that it's just, you know, I mean, we're still be, early. Yeah, yeah. We know, talked about, actually, we talked about this. Uh, November, I yeah. think it was. Yeah. Together, yeah. October, November, yeah. I think it was. You know, the bike is now finished, so yeah. we're middle of January. It was yeah. finished right around the beginning of the year. Um, and, you know, we'll just we'll just take it right on in and, and, and uh, use it for the event. And hopefully somebody buys it and, yeah. and can enjoy it. You know, yeah. that'd be the cool part. And, and I've actually had some people that came in and said, man, they've looked at the history bike, the original history bike, yeah. and said, you know, I'd buy that bike if it wasn't a bunch of white dudes on it. <laughs> and that was what really triggered it one day. Okay. A dude said that to me. Yeah. He said, man, that is a really cool bike, he said, but I don't want to have a bunch of white dudes on my bike. He said, that'd be, you know, and I'm like, okay. And, and that's what actually, crazy enough, it it, it got that, that the wheel spin, you know, spin. and I'm okay. like, Damn, you know, you might have a good point. Okay. Maybe for whatever reason. Yeah. Maybe if we built a Black History bike, that somebody would would really get you know. Or come in and say, I would buy that bike if it had, if it had a bunch of black dudes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> now, now you got your choice. Yeah. I've got one with a bunch of white dudes and one with a bunch of black dudes on it. So. So, we're so <laughs> when you're dealing with when you're dealing with the different demographics, I mean, as an owner, as, as a person like you said, coming up from where you come from. Is it is it sad sometimes? Is it is it crazy sometimes that the people? I mean, because I'm pretty sure you run into people from all different shapes and sizes, different colors, and then you being an owner, being significant, has it ever has it ever come into play? Has it ever been? 
you know, questioned I, or talked about? I, I don't, you know, I think I do a lot of things a lot different. You, you know, do. I keep it a motorcycle shop. I have fun. I want all my employees to have fun. I want my customers to have fun. Yeah. We, I'm in, I always tell everybody I'm in the business of fulfilling dreams. Okay. You know, so, uh, you know, you get, you try your damnedest to get everybody that wants a motorcycle on a motorcycle. Because mm. I can promise everyone of you watching right now at some point, you said, man, I'd like to have a Harley. Yeah. And and I promise you, everybody everybody can remember their first Harley. Mm. I've had a bunch of them. I don't yeah. remember a lot of them in between. But that first my girlfriends, one. you know, yeah. but there's always uh, that first one and, and, yeah. and, and the current one, yeah. you know. So, uh, you know, it's... It, it really it, it's 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 gratifying yeah. to watch a guy that comes in the door you know whatever whoever it is or a gal you yeah know, you know we get a lot of women riders now as the, as the, the times have changed yeah. a lot more women are getting involved in the motorcycling side of it, it it's really cool to just to see them you know leave out on their first Harley you yeah. know? it's like yeah you know so it's what does like for example when you when you have situations to where, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm just guessing that these are situations, when you have situations where you really, a customer come in and as an owner, let's just say you're in the background and you're watching, and they really want to bike, but for whatever reason, they just, qualification-wise, financial-wise, they can't do it. Does that, does that kind of sometimes when you want to step in and just say, here, we're going to make this happen for you? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's that's happened lots of times. Okay. You know, I, <clears throat> again, I want everybody riding a motorcycle. I want everybody. I, I know I can't sell every Harley Davidson that Harley Davidson produces every <laughs> yeah. year, but I sure as I like to, you know. Yeah. Um, it, it's yeah, and, and you know the neat part about what I do is is being able to to get in there, and it might be a phone call to the bank. It might be a yeah. you know the guy's five hundred short, and, yeah. and and you know let's let's figure something out and okay. let's get you riding that motorcycle. And you know, there's lots of times where people will say, I just you know, I just don't have the down payment or yeah. whatever, and and I'll you know, I, there's many times where I've, I've I've had to step in and just make it work. You know, yeah. you do what you got to do to to try to get them right. You know, and and you know, crazy enough, it's 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 the ones you help and and that need the help, and 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 you go out of your way to help them that that they just you know they, they're. They're really appreciative of what of what you do to yeah. help them, you know, get on that bike, and, yeah. and they're loyal. They're loyal customers, yeah. you know. Yeah, man, I remember you helped me you know, yeah. get my first one. I'm ready to buy another one, and you know. So a lot really of people, cool. a lot of people want to say that we as African Americans saved Harley days, and I tell them I disagree with that. And I'm gonna see well, what is your. Do you think the African Americans have come into Harley Davidson now by buying bikes, and do you think we have made that much of an impact to save Harley Davidson? Well, I mean, to say that any one race saved Harley Davidson, I think is a, is a a little bit stretch. Yeah, it's a little bit of a stretch. Yeah. I don't know. You know, you look at you know Harley has statistics of what their core customer is, and you know it's it's age, it's race, and it's yeah. income, and yada 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 yada. yada. Okay. You know, but you know, I can tell you from my point of view, yeah, what we have done in the market. We have made a big impact on on anything other than the core customer. What Harley calls your outreach customer, okay. your core customer is any any. Uh, I think it's a white male between the ages of thirty six and fifty four or something okay. like that. You know, so uh, outside of that is is is, 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 is what they call outreach. Now okay. that'd be women, that'd be uh, you know anybody of anything other than that thirty six to fifty four. Uh -huh. A uh, young rider, yeah. 22, 22. Yeah, yeah, any any young rider, any female, American, like, Asian, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah any, yeah. So, so you say you guys have mastered that? Well, you guys have. I don't, I don't know that we've mastered it, but we've made a big impact. Okay. Um, and, and they monitor that stuff, and you know, I've got a pretty high outreach number yeah. um, when they look at my percentages. Um, my outreach is pretty high, and I. I think that's just because of the way we do business. You know, yeah. everybody's welcome. Everybody, we want you to come hang out and, yeah. and and have fun. You know, we we're not we're not those guys that look at somebody when they walk through the door and say that guy can buy a motorcycle, that he guy can't, can't yeah. buy a motorcycle. Whoa! We, we when you walk through the door, we look at everybody and we want to figure out a way to make sure you can buy a motorcycle. Yeah, so, I mean that's when it when it comes to <clears throat> when it comes to the Harley brand. What do you love most about the Harley brand? Oh, man, that's a that's a tough <laughs> brand. Yeah, 
I mean, I, I just, I'm a motorcycle guy, yeah. you know? It's, so why not, you know, the others? You know, why not? Why, why Harley? If you gotta ask, uh, <laughs> if you gotta ask, and I gotta explain, you know? It no, ain't I mean, it's just, you think about it, man. I mean, yeah. think about when you was a kid, you know? I mean, I can remember I was, you know, five, six years old, my uncle had a Harley, you yeah. know? And I just thought that, you know, he was, was the baddest son bitch in the world, yeah. you know? Because he's got a Harley. And I, I don't know, it's it's just weird. The sound, you know, yeah. for one, is, yeah. is cool. The style is cool. And, and what we do with them, you know, I mean, everybody wants a Harley, yeah. you know, I mean, for the most part. Everybody sits back and has thought about it at one point in their life, man, you know, I'd like to have a Harley. Whether they, they, they reacted on it or it was just a, a thought, you know, I'm sure everybody out there has thought, man, I'd like to own a Harley, you know, and it's... One of my biggest things I always tell people is that people ask me, "Say, I'm going to get my first Harley, what should I get? I say, listen, man, nobody should be on nothing less than a road king. That's just, that's just my, even though they sell the other bikes, you know, yeah. man, I'm not down on the other bikes, I'm just saying. Yeah, me no. personally, I guess I'm a little biased because I, you know, I do travel and I do do yeah, that. I but. mean, you got you to gotta buy, for one, what's comfortable for your budget, yeah. for two, what's comfortable for you as a person. Yeah. You know, you get a, you get a, a little girl that's, it's five foot tall and weighs 85 pounds. Yeah. I mean, a rope king's a little bit of, a, you know, but us, us uh, what, what do we call But ourselves? we have seen them ride them. We have. Yeah. Us, us chubby kids, as we call each other, we don't fit too well yeah, on a yeah. lot of the little bikes, you know. So, yeah. it, uh, you know, it's, it, it's, it's really what fits your budget, what fits you, and, and, and what you're comfortable on, you know, and that's why... That's what we like to do. That's that's the cool part of the job because you take somebody that's really intimidated and, and you put them on something and they go, holy shit, man, this thing's really cool. You know, I, I always tell a story <clears throat> about a very loyal customer of ours. She had a heritage and two years ago, um, her name was Donna and she come in here, her and her husband both, he rode a road glide, she had a heritage and she fell in love with this 14 street glide in the charcoal gray. Okay. Pearl. Yeah. She's like, man, that's such a pretty bike. If I could just ride it. I said, you could ride that bike. She's you like, ride an you ride She's like, I can't ride that bike. I said, put your damn big girl panties on and take it for a ride. She's like, no, no, no. So I pulled it outside. Yeah. Pulled it right off the showroom floor, pulled it outside, fired it up, put a tag on it. I said, go ride it and come back when you're done. Yeah. And she took off on it and she's gone for about 30, 40 minutes and she come back and she pulled in and she had a smile from ear to ear. <laughs> and she's like, I just would have never imagined that I could ride a street glide. I yeah. said, I try, you know, it's just things like that that make the business really cool, you know. And she yeah. ended up buying the bike and and she rides with a uh, group of ladies. She actually moved to Texas, but she's she's got, you know, a bunch of miles on that street glide and loves yeah. life, you know. So it's, it's is, it, is it important <clears throat> to you, I mean... One of the biggest things I heard when I first got in Harley Davidson was they were the raggediest bikes ever built. How has that transitioned? Yeah, I mean, you go back to the 60s and yeah. 50s and 40s and yeah. 30s, everything was a rag back then. <laughs> I mean, in the end, yeah. was, was just as bad. Yeah. Excelsior was just as bad, you know. Yeah. If you knew you had to add oil when they quit leaving oil back in the day. You yeah. know, but, you know, it's like anything nowadays, you know, ever they're trying to make, they're trying to build the best bike they can build, you yeah. know. It's it's a motorcycle, it's just like a car. They break down, you know, they have problems. It's a mechanical thing, you know, built by humans. Not all humans are perfect, not all mechanical things are perfect, so you're gonna have As the owner, do you guys get to give input on what you would like to see in bikes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, uh, they hold town hall meetings and yeah. we, get to, we get to tell them and, and you know, whether they listen or not, I don't know, yeah. but you know, it's you get to give them your feedback. And, yeah. You know, we get to ride stuff and, and and give them feedback on it. They have track days and stuff like that for the dealerships. And you can go out and ride different manufacturers and ride Harley and you give them your feedback. And what, if, is there anything that you would love to see on one that's not been put on one yet? Man, other than about a 150 inch motor with 300 <laughs> horsepower. <laughs> <laughs> You know, they're a bigger motor. They, they, yeah, they, they, I, love, they I love that horsepower. Yeah. I love that torque. Yeah. You know, that's that's the cool part is, yeah. is the torque of these things, you know. Well, I, like I said, I tell everybody, a Harley can be expensive or it can be super expensive. It's all up to you. Because, like I said, when you get to playing with that motor and motor work, and it just never stops. And that's one thing, too, about a Harley Davidson is that it never stops. You can, you no. can paint it, design it, and yep. repaint it and redesign it. Global. I mean, it's just so much. You know, every two years or three years, if you wanted a brand new bike, you got one. 
You basically just repaint it, swap, you know, change this, change that. I'm good and about every six months. <laughs> <laughs> My MVP kicks in. <laughs> do you, so do you often ride or do you get... Do you, yeah, I mean, I try to. I, I stay busy. You know, yeah. I got the Bulldog. He comes to work with me usually yeah. every day, so... That cuts into my my riding schedule, but you know I try to get out. We do at least one trip a year, yeah. you know, <clears throat> um, and it's usually about a thousand miles and you yeah. know a couple of days, yeah. two or three days of sightseeing. And uh, last year we did uh, Pacific Coast Highway. Ah, oh, the PCA. Well, that's when you were uh, when, when it was Oakland. When yeah, I, when I you were when you Oakland? were at the uh, Harley store when yeah. I was at the hotel. Yeah, yeah. So we left Oakland and went to uh, Seattle. Okay. So that was that was a pretty cool ride, and you know we yeah. try to do that every year. So is it important? Is it important for, like, do you care about when a person comes in to buy a Harley? Do you care if they know like at least some of the history of what they're getting into or the brand itself, or you know you, you kind of let that just be on their own or you know? Yeah, I mean the problem is you could sit there and, and spend hours and hours and hours trying to you know we. <clears throat> Most people know, you know, that's the cool part about this thing is if a customer comes in to buy a motorcycle, probably 90% of them have already done the all research, the research, yeah. you know. I mean, you think about it when you bought your road glide, you yeah. knew that you wanted a blue road glide. You walked in, said, I want a blue road glide, yeah. and, and, and that, that was that, ride, you know. Yeah. it's So uh, the people do, especially nowadays, you know, with the internet and everything, people yeah. just... They, they, they research that stuff and they know they've they've pretty much made their mind up before they come in what they want, you know, and sometimes it'll flip, you know, they get in here and they'll see something else and go, oh man, I, I think I'd rather have that, and, <laughs> and they go that direction, but the majority of the time if a guy walks in to buy a black street glider, a black road glider, a blue rope king, he's, he's made his mind up and that's what he comes in and he usually leaves on it, you know. So there's no special months, no winter nah. months, summer months. Nah. The prices don't go up in the summer. Nope. They don't. Nope. So all that's fictitious. You want to buy a motorcycle, you need to call me on the phone. 407 948 5853 and you want to buy a motorcycle. You're gonna buy one. They got they you're gonna make it happen. If, if you want to buy a motorcycle, you're gonna buy a motorcycle if yeah. you call me on the phone, I promise you. Yeah, it is there, man. My man Ken Barner. One of the, one of the privileges I've had, man, is to get to know you and see you and, and to see your passion and love and get into the Iron Elite program. What made you so much, what made you kind of care about the Iron Elite program? 
<clears throat> well, you know, again, it was it was there was nobody. I, I don't want it to sound like it was a a marketing thing, but it yeah. was there was nobody in this area that that embraced it. Mm -hmm. You know that 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 just that that took it and hugged it, took it and hugged it, and, and said, you know what, I'm going to make a project out of this, and 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 guys are buying motorcycles, yeah. you know, so why not take those guys, embrace them, build a culture, have a place where they can go, have a place for everybody to come in, hang out, sit out. I mean, yeah, you come rocking out, you bring your out in a rocking yeah. chair, smoking, chill out, yeah. cutting up. Ain't nobody know? saying nothing. You in the way or nothing? No, yeah, man. Yeah. You know, and and. I think that's it. Just you could see that 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 culture needed a home. Okay. You know, it, it's like they were homeless almost, yeah. and they needed somewhere that they could they could call home. Yeah. And 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 why not? You yeah. know, why not? What, what makes that culture any different than this culture? So, come on. Yeah. You know, if I can get one more culture to to get in my circle and and we can have a good time and sell motorcycles and. And parts and, and and you know I've and I've made some just I mean awesome friends awesome friends yeah. uh, you know I mean those guys come to my house and, yeah. and you know they joke about it because I'm this old redneck <laughs> from the mountains you know and, and here they are coming over to my house for Christmas parties yeah. and Fourth of July parties and you know so it, it's pretty cool you know and I and I again I've made some really good friends and I've had some good customers and. And and I think it's helped us a lot, you know. I, I think it's, uh, I think they've they've found a place that they can call home. That's cool. And 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 and, 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 and I mean, it's genuine feel. It ain't, you, you know, when you come, it's just automatic. You can breathe. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 man. You can, yeah, you yeah. come in here and do whatever you want. What? When was your first acknowledgement of FHO? When did you find out about FHO? Oh man, shit! I don't even know. <laughs> How? When? Let me think about that. That's a tough one. Yeah. I don't even remember. I don't know. To be yeah. honest with you, I don't. It's been so long now. Yeah. I, I just, you know. I, yeah. I think. I mean, you watched me grow. You, you, you yeah, grow. yeah. Yeah. You know. Of course, it, motorcycle videos on on YouTube. Uh -huh. that's, you know. I mean, again, if I'm gonna watch something on TV, I'd rather yeah. flip YouTube up on a TV <laughs> or watch motorcycle videos. My, yeah. my wife, she gets you know a little bit it's sideways right, yeah. about it because it's I do it all day long and come home and do it. You yeah. know, but. Uh, I don't even remember, to be honest with you. So I, I don't know if it was Dave that introduced us. I think maybe. Probably so, but I mean, um, I, from I, there, I don't even know if it was yeah. Dave. I think it was before Dave, really. I mean, personally, personal introduction may have been Dave, but I thought you. But I thought maybe before that we might have clicked either on Facebook or Instagram. Might have been, yeah. yeah. It's probably on Facebook. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah, because. So do you like do with with the integrating the Harley Davidson? Like I said, even when you called about the history bite and everything. Um, I really believe, man, that well, what I'm doing is bridging the gap, and and I and it's people like you who give me the opportunity to do that, and and I just thank you for that, and I want to take the time again, really, right here now, to say thank you, because I don't ever get a chance to really just say thank you, but thank you for that, man, and just thank you for everything that you've allowed me to do, man, as far as with the FHO movement and incorporating it with you and, and the whole nine yards, man. I mean, I just think yeah, that. it's you know you gotta have you gotta have two more than one. There's, there's no I in team, yeah. so, you know, it, it's it, to, to bridge that gap, if there is a gap, I mean, I don't feel there's a gap here, mm -hmm. you know, um, I, I, I think that gap has been closed um, as far as the dealerships that we own and that I run yeah. on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, because as you well know, I'm, I'm in a dealership every day. Every day. Um, <clears throat> you know, so we, I think we've bridged that gap, but I, I, I get what you're saying, you know, there's, there's still... There's probably a bigger Universal. gap than we've yeah. we've even than we've even uh, yeah. ventured to, to try and close. And, yeah. and uh, you know, it, can we close it? I don't know that we'll ever close it. Yeah. You know, because there's more people. But you know, all you can do is give it a shot. You know, we threw our foot in there, man, yeah. and, and gave it a bet and did yeah. our best, man. Yeah. So I really thank you for that. Sometimes people might question the fact that hey, you know, as an owner, do you care more about the bottom line or do you care more about you know, the product, the people, the brand. What is it? What is it for? At the end of the day, what really is? It? Well, it's it's the customers. It, it really is. I mean, because uh, you know, ultimately, the bottom line is, you know, I got to pay the bills. I got to keep the lights on. I've got to keep all my employees and paychecks. And, yeah. You know, I've got a lot of people re re that, that rely on me to feed their families. Um, 
But, you know, ultimately, when you look at it, if you don't have the customer, mm -hmm. if you don't have the customer base, none of the other stuff comes along with it. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you ain't got the customers coming in the door buying parts, servicing their bikes, buying motorcycles, buying t-shirts or hats mm -hmm. or jackets or whatever it may be, if they're not coming in your door, then the rest of it is, is irrelevant, is irrelevant yeah. because without the customer, you don't have the business, you yeah. know. So to answer your question, the customer is the most important, you know, the part of the business. Do you think there's more that can be done um, from dealers, I ain't gonna say from dealers worldwide because Harley did anything, but do you think there's more that can be done to, to I think, bring awareness, for example, like, Harley Davidson has a line called Afro Puff line. You know, when, like when I come in to buy a t-shirt, I'm, I'm actually past that now. I'm about, I got stacks of t-shirts that I'll probably yeah. wear or won't wear. But anyway, yeah. back in the day when I was buying t-shirts, as, as an Afro-American, it was important for me to find shirts with Afro-Americans on them. Some dealerships don't carry them at all. Some dealerships, is that, what, what is that? What is it, what is that, you know, what, what is it that makes that like? I, you know, it, well, it's limited. That okay. I think is the biggest thing okay. because it's just not a. There's not a. Well, for one, you don't have a bunch of t-shirts of women on them anymore. Okay. You know, the t-shirt business has changed okay. and it's more. But we 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 had the uh, was it last year? I think it was when they ran the the two or three different shirts. Mm -hmm. We had those sold out of them yeah. very quick. Yeah. Um, you know, so the the problem is is you order those t-shirts. I've ordered last year for what I'm getting this, this year. year yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, that stuff was ordered back in June. I, well, no, it was actually probably more than. It was probably February. Of, <coughs> I'm not doing only New Year's orders, but early February, late March. Yeah, I mean, early so, February, late February, early March. Yeah. So yeah. all that stuff is now coming in. Now you know, coming so in. you sort of kind of have to pick and, and and go. Okay, is this shirt going to sell? Is that shirt going to sell? Right. And then you think of how many you can sell, then you order them. You yeah. know, so it's. It's not. I don't think it's a, an issue of dealers okay. not carrying them. They okay. they may have carried it, and it may have it may have been a popular shirt, and it sold out. And when you were there, or I yeah. was there, it was gone. Okay. You know, um, so it's 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 a tricky business. You know, trying to running three dealerships: Stonewall, Old Dominion, Quantico. How do you keep each one different? <sighs> <laughs> Because they all have to have their own, you know, kind they of... They do. Yeah. They do. They have, they, they, you know, the demographics is different, yeah. obviously. Okay. Um, you know, I don't try to keep them different. I try to keep them similar, you know, yeah. but but the clientele is different. Okay. You know, so you got to sort of kind of tailor the business to the clientele. Yeah. You know, and it, it, it's... It's a job. It's a job. It is a full-time job. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, uh, but it's fun. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't change it for the world. If you said you want whatever, and I, uh, no, uh, I'm out. I enjoy it. Is Cam Barney yeah. looking to Brian Moore store, or are you good with the three? Always looking. Always. You always <laughs> looking to, <laughs> you know. You never Going know. here, or are you going somewhere else? You never know. You never know. know. You, just, you just never know what will happen. Say, man, if you get close to me, I'm there, man. That's you just with you. never know. If you get close to me, man, you got me. I'm, I'm there, man. Georgia's a long way <laughs> <laughs> There's a big spread between Virginia and, and Georgia. Georgia. <laughs> I'm just letting you know. Yeah. You get close, I'm there, man. Anyway, a couple of hundred miles, I, I, I can make that transition. But anyway, man, I just, one of the biggest things, man, I just love the fact of who you are, just a genuine person, your love for the, for the brand, your love for the people. And I think that's what kind of makes you a lot different. Not a little different, but a lot different. Um, and just, I just want the people to take this time to get to know you because once we introduce this next phase of it. So, I'm here with Ken Barner. We have a project that we're doing, a giveaway that we're doing for Black History Month. Um, it's gonna blow you away. Now, we haven't really, I, I came up with, we, we, like I said, we've been reaching out on this thing. We have the Black History Bike, you guys will see that. We're gonna talk about that. It took decades before Sugar Bear was accepted into the mainstream shopper community. And to get there, he rode the shoulders of a legendary bike builder who didn't live long enough to get the credit he deserved. There's a guy named Benny Hardy, who we call the king of bikes. Benny was a guy that everybody patterned themselves after. If you didn't know something about a bike, even if you had a shop, you called Benny. And Benny was a guy that... Uh, most people don't know about, but 
He built the two most famous bikes in the history of motorcycling, I think, the Easy Rider bikes for the movie. Throughout the years, passionate women have inspired others to feel the open road on a Harley. Bessie Stringfield, known as the Motorcycle Queen of Miami, was the first African-American woman to travel cross-country solo in 1930. What's even more impressive is that she did it at the age of 19. Her determination to ride broke down barriers for women and African-American motorcycle enthusiasts. During her lifetime, Bessie owned 27 Harleys and completed eight cross-country tours through the lower 48 states. She later went on to ride in Europe, Brazil, and Haiti. In 1990, the American Motorcyclist Association's AMA recognized Bessie in its inaugural exhibit, Heroes of Harley-Davidson. Thanks to courageous women like Bessie Stringfield, the open road is truly open for everyone. I want you to say that I try to love and save humanity. Yes, if you want to say that I was a drum major. Say that I was a drum major for justice. Say that I was a drum major for peace. I was a drum major for righteousness. And all of the other shallow things will not matter. I won't have any money to leave behind. I won't have the fine and luxurious things of life to leave behind. But I just want to leave a committed life behind. And that's all I want to say. If I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with a word of song, if I can show somebody he's traveling wrong, then my living will not be in vain. But we're also giving away a bike. They want to give away a bike. And when I said, okay, rap, no sale, no sale. Okay, we get no sale, no. I want to give it away free and clear. Keys, bike, title, roll out. Correct? Okay, let's talk about that. Why that? Why? Why give away a bike? Why? Well, you know, again, we go back to the... You go back to the... Uh, Iron Elite program and, and trying to generate, trying to get that interest, trying to get more folks involved in the Harleys. Mm -hmm. What what do we got to do? What what what's going to draw interest? Everybody likes free. Yeah. Everybody likes a free Harley Davidson. Free. Yeah. I you mean, can't yeah. beat that at all. <laughs> you know. So so we're you know we, we I got with corporate and we talked about some stuff and. You know, we're going to do the Iron Elite event, and, and, and I thought, man, you know, if we're going to do an Iron Elite event, let's do it in February, Black History Month, let's give away the motorcycle. Yeah. It all just comes together. It was really, yeah, it was crazy because we built the Black History bike, the Iron yeah. Elite bike. We, we're going into February, yeah. which is Black History Month, yeah. and we're going to give away a motorcycle at an Iron Elite event. I mean, it just all sort of kind of ran right in together. Um, so this will be the second. The, this year we'll do two because we do our normal okay. Iron Elite event and then, yeah. then this we're going to do the February Iron Elite event. So, yeah. so uh, this year we'll have two of them. So we got So listen, y'all. February twenty fourth, right here at Quantico Harley Davidson. You must be present to win, and that's that's they, that's the catch. Sorry, but you must be present to win. Um, that way we have no ifs, ands, or buts about the bike was you know trick rigged or not given away. But what we're going to do is uh, we're going to have a nice little party. We're going to gather. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Nice we're going to have, yeah, we're going we're gonna to blow it up like we always do. Yeah. Party. Yeah. Food and all that stuff. All that stuff. Yeah. February 24th. February 24th is the day you need to be here. You don't have to buy a t-shirt. You don't have to buy a token. You don't have to buy nothing. You just have to be here to get the ticket and be entered into the drawing. Street Ride 750. Yep. HD. Free. 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 No entry fee. <clears throat> no... Buy a t-shirt, which we do hope that you come and support the dealership that day, but you don't have to buy a t-shirt to enter. We will be setting up the entry thing and getting it all done. And uh, like I said, I think we're going to put the twist on it as every hour or so. We're going to pull 15 names from the big batch to put in the load. I think that's going to be high. That's going to yeah, be intense yeah, right there. Yeah, cool. <laughs> I think that's going to be intense. So the Street Ride 750. Um, and again, man, we I just thank you. I mean, just thank you for everything. Thank you for caring. Thank you for... Even want to do it. I mean, the whole nine yards. That's what we're here for. Yeah. Anyway, man, it's your boy, Big Sale, FHOH, and I see that's been my time with Ken Barner, man, a very busy man. Three dealerships. He got to run three. So that's this for him to sit down with this hour with me, man, and you guys to see this. Again, give him um, Chronicle. I mean, it'll be posted, but if you heard the man say earlier that if you want a motorcycle, you give him a call, you'll have a motorcycle. 
That, that's your I word. Promise you. <laughs> I promise you. <laughs> Hey man, well that's your boy Big Center Fate Choice and I see I'm with my man Ken Barner, owner of Quantico, Stonewall, Old Dominion, Harley Davidson. From Dumfries, Virginia to Fredericksburg. Fredericksburg, Virginia. And Orange. And Orange, Virginia. You got Virginia a lot, man. We're all over. <laughs> <laughs> so anywhere in Virginia, man, you gotta run into my man Ken. And if you're not here, he said call him. He will make it happen. Again, man, I just want to thank you for your time. Thank you for your Thanks love. for coming. Thank you for your effort. My man Ken Barnes, it's your boy Big Sell FHH and I'll see you, man. I'm gone. Friend.